We know that for now, right now at least, cells only come from pre-existing cells. So there must be some way that cells can make more cells. They do this by dividing. Now there are many mechanisms for cell division. For example, mitosis and cytokinesis, and there's the more primitive binary fission, and there's budding, and so on. But why should cells divide? Well, wait a second. If a cell gets too big, cells rely on the mechanism called diffusion. So think about dropping ink into water. So here you have a big bowl of water and you start off with a little blob of ink. What does it do? Well, the particles move around randomly and they tend to spread out. Right? So, what happens when a cell must get all of its oxygen and nutrients and so on from across the cell membrane by diffusion? Or it must cross a big distance by diffusion? Well, if you wait for this ink blob to reach the edge of the bowl, it takes a long time. But for this ink blob to have a little bit of distance, it takes a very short time. So if a cell gets too big, nutrients and oxygen cannot get to its interior fast enough. Now we should point out that there is a special form of diffusion called osmosis, which is for water. So if the cell can't get nutrients to the center fast enough, and oxygen too, if it's aerobic, or facultatively aerobic, then, well, it dies. So, I mean, clearly the cell does its best to stay alive and reproduce. So, to reproduce, it divides. And also to stay alive, it divides. Now, for reproduction, it can be asexual reproduction in the case of just making a two daughter cells that are exactly the same at least in theory. I mean, yes, when you're copying your DNA, you will make some mistakes. Therefore, there will be some mutations. But for the most part, the daughter cells are the same as the parent cell. So asexual reproduction can be as simple as one cell dividing to make two cells. Or it can be a little bit more complicated and involve a little bit more cell division in the form of strawberry runners. Now, cell division is also involved in sexual reproduction. For example, starting with one cell and then making four sperm, or one egg and three non-viable cells that you get rid of. Now, the fusion of two gametes produces offspring that are genetically different from the parent. Why is this useful? I mean, you'd think that, oh, making more of me gives me more genetic benefit. Hurrah! No. The thing is, if there is something that, say, you're susceptible to, some illness, then it's better to, or parasite, then it's better to recombine your genome with other genomes to try to find a way to get better resistance instead of having all the same and then having the illness just sweep right through. For example, uh, various famines and other disasters began because of large-scale monoculture. That is actually a, even like a lot actually uh, better than having a lot of clones. So for example, planting a bunch of the same type of potato in a field is not safe because of various diseases. And of course pests too. But that's comparatively minor compared to stuff like late blight. <clears throat> now you should know the historical connotations of late blight. If you don't, feel free to look it up. Now, here we have strawberry runners. These generate new plants. It is said that a strawberry that plant that has been alive for more than five or so years will not produce good fruit. So these new plants, these new plants that are technically clones of the old one, 
they will produce good fruit. That is why one patch of strawberry can perpetuate itself for quite a lot longer than the five years that most gardeners will recommend. This is a strawberry flower. I sincerely hope it is obvious which one is which out of runners versus flowers. <laughs> so, this strawberry flower, well, it has stamens and it has pistils. So, it d does sexual reproduction. Now, while the genetic contribution to each offspring is only half as much as clonal reproduction, i.e. asexual reproduction, well, you get more benefit if more of them survive, right? Makes sense. Instead of just spewing off a bunch of clones, and then when an illness hits that the entire field is susceptible to, they all die. That's worse than having a few survive that don't have all your genetic information in terms of your contribution to the next generation. Now, there's, of course, cell division for growth as well. Now, or, not only on an organismal level, but also, well, on a uh, cellular level. And I mean growth in terms of organismal growth, which you have experienced because you grew up from a little baby to now. That is because of your cells dividing and making more cells and making you bigger. Now, cells themselves, because they rely on diffusion, as they grow, they will divide to make sure that they can continue to get enough nutrients. Now, you might be thinking, hey, wait, if the blood vessel is over here, then doesn't this cell end up much worse off? Well, the thing is, in the human body, there are very few cells that are not within about 10-ish micrometers of a capillary. And the actual oxygen concentration demanded is not actually that high for our cells. This is why tetanus bacteria, which are actually obligate anaerobes, can grow inside wounds. And why uh, the tetanus shot is so important. Now, concentration is defined as the amount of substance, solute, present in a given volume of solution. With diffusion, well, diffusion is technically just from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. It does not necessarily demand that it be across a membrane. Whereas osmosis is the movement of a fluid, usually water, almost always water, across a membrane toward an area of high solute concentration. Wait a second. If we have a particular amount of space, and most of it is solute, that means that there's a low water concentration, right? And if you have... More, add more solutes, then that's an even lower water concentration. Because the volume overall grows and the amount of water stays the same. Now there's also cell division for repair. Now you have most likely, almost certainly, scraped your knuckles or your knee or something, or bitten the inside of your mouth while chewing. Ouch! These are conscious uh, experiences regarding cell division for repair. Those injuries healed because the cells around them divided it to fill in the space. Or if the dermis was intact, it divided to replace the epidermis. Now, you have definitely unconsciously experienced cell division for repair. Why do I say this? It's because the stomach lining replaces itself the outer, outermost layer, every two days or so. That's fast. That means the cells there must be dividing quite quickly. And why are they dividing? I mean, the stomach lining isn't getting any thicker. It's because the outermost cells keep on dying to the acidic conditions of the stomach. Hence, that's cell division for repair. Now, in summary, cells undergo cell division for reproduction growth, and repair. Now, for reproduction, it can be easier for a unicellular organism, in which case the entire act of reproduction is done in one cell division, done. Or it can be for a multicellular organism, in which case that's asexual reproduction of the multicellular organism. You make a clone. Now, growth. 
this is not just for the cell's own growth, so it can keep growing by pinching off into two cells, but also for the organism's growth, such as you or I. And of course for repair, hence why our injuries, such as this scar on my head, heal. Now reproduction involves the transfer of genetic information from the parent or parents to the offspring. It can be sexual, i.e. two parents, at least in Earth's form of sexual reproduction. Or it can be asexual, in which case there's only one parent. It doesn't matter, it's still reproduction. As multicellular organisms grow, their cells duplicate their genetic information and divide. Why do they have to duplicate the genetic information? It's because otherwise you would end up with less and less information in each cell until it could no longer keep itself alive. And thus your, the cells die and, well, bad things happen to the organism. We do note that sometimes mistakes happen when you're duplicating the genetic information. If these mistakes are not corrected or the cell doesn't commit suicide because the mistakes are too, too bad, then, well, the errors, the mutations can accumulate and the cell can eventually become cancerous. Now, chemicals diffuse into, throughout, and out of cells. This process must happen quickly enough for the cell to function. So if a cell is too big, it takes way too long for the chemicals to diffuse across, and thus it can't stay alive. Now when part of an organism is damaged, the remaining cells try to their best to divide and repair the injury. Obviously, sometimes this doesn't work. But for the most part, it tends to work out relatively well, thankfully. <laughs>